So, has it sunk in yet? No. <laughs> no, honestly, it hasn't. Um, I've I've had a few um, brief little dinners with some friends. Mm -hmm. um, I've just been going to and from school, and I really haven't done much. Um, my son and I went out to the golf course a couple times to go go play golf a little bit. And the members were fantastic and yeah. lots of hugs. And uh, but to be honest, with you, I really haven't I haven't seen much. I haven't done much. Uh, I've been basically just relaxing and kind of uh, basically getting away from it. And does it feel surreal still? It does. It does. It, uh, honestly, it, it's hard to believe. You know, I was texting one of my good friends last night um, after soccer practice that you know, I couldn't believe that I, I won the tournament. It really hasn't sunk in. Um, because I haven't started grinding up for another my next event. Yeah. I haven't started, you know, prepping my body. I haven't started doing anything. I've just kind of been laying there. And every now and again, you know, I'll look over there on the couch and there's the jacket. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I, kind of, I did pull it off. I did that. Mm. How did you celebrate? I know you said you had a few dinners with friends, but anything else that you kind of tried to capture that moment? You know, to be honest with you, I really haven't gone all out with any kind of celebration. Um, the people who I wanted to celebrate with, I did. Mm -hmm. um, friends and family who are really close to me and are at home. Um, and that's, that's about it. And to be honest with you, I really haven't done much. Uh, I know that sounds boring, and, um, but I really, I really haven't. Uh, I've just been at home and just letting it, like, everything thaw out and yeah. just kind of uh, trying to understand what I had accomplished, but I really haven't, I don't, I don't think, I haven't come to grips with it yet. Um, very similar to what it was in 1997. And that took me years to understand what I, what I accomplished. Um, I was just so excited when I won my first major championship that I got a 10-year exemption. And I had a livelihood for the next 10 years because that was the last time they did it. Um, in 98, they changed the rule and Marco Mira won two major championships and only got five years. Um, so 97 was the last time they had a 10-year exemption. So for me, starting out my career with 10-year exempt status was, was big. And it, as I said, it didn't take me a couple of years to understand what I accomplished. And I don't think this one will settle in for, for quite some time as well. You mentioned that you played golf with Charlie. Has this, and it was special mm. for you having your children there, having your family there. Has this victory earned you any extra cool dad points, or are you just treated <laughs> the same? I'm still the same. They, they uh, still give me a hard time, as, as they should, and yeah. the needles fired right back at them. So that, that, that hasn't changed. And I just think they, they I gained a, an, an appreciation for the moment um, because they, they were there when I, when I failed. Hmm. Um, I had a chance to win. The last time they came out, I had a chance to win the Open Championship, and they felt the buzz of, you know, dads on the top of the board, and I lost, and uh, that sucked. But now they saw me on top of the board, and I, I accomplished it. So, um, two polarizing situations, but I think that they have a, a better appreciation for. It. Well, not, not only that, I think they also understand that when I try and tell them, try and describe how hilly. Augusta National is that they really don't understand until they finally walked it, and um, that's one of the things that they keep talking about. Is you know I can't believe how hilly this place is. <laughs> I said, yeah, it's, I told you it's not Florida. It's not flat. They were tired afterwards. Yes, they were. They were definitely tired. <laughs> Going back to the start of that week, we messaged. You said to me, "This could be a special mm -hmm. one." You've since told me, "I told mm -hmm. you so," mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was a special week. But what inclination did you have that it would be the week potentially? You know, to be honest with you, I f found um, a swing in which I could start drawing the ball. Um, and there, uh, you know, because I don't have the length that I used to have, I can't hit three wood anymore off some of these tees. Mm -hmm. um, you saw a couple times down 10, I actually hit driver, uh, which I've never done before. I've lost a little bit off my fastball, so I've got to rely on the driver. And so I found something in, in my game where I start feeling comfortable turning it. And I felt comfortable turning the long irons, the three wood, the five wood, the driver. Um, but I, I maintain the ability to hit the slider. And so I'm like, okay, we, we've got something here. Now I'm just gonna get my, 
my, my chipping and my putting and organized and and Joey was Joey was instrumental in trying to get me there a, a day early. Um, typically, I don't come in on a Sunday, uh, but we went out and I told him, "Hey, I've been grinding my 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 butt off at home, getting ready for this event. Uh, I'm not playing today, but I'll chip and putt." So mm -hmm. we did. We went out and we chipped and putted on the first nine holes, and just worked on speed. And more than anything, I had to open my mind up because you know the the time I the week before I played up there went out and played well, but the first couple putts and first couple chips, my mind has been has been so closed down because it hasn't seen that much break. Like the option that that the lane is not the size of a hole. Sometimes it's three four feet in which you can make a putt or a chip. The lanes are so much bigger in which mm -hmm. you feed the ball in the hole. So I had to open up my mind. And so that, that nine hole session on Sunday set the tone for my mind being opened up to see the mountain break. Okay, to start on a left to right chip, you know, I'll, I'll hold one with a little draw spin on this thing a little bit. And I'll, I'll make the, you know, not run off so much. And so I was trying to play with the hands and the shots and opened my mind up again, as I was saying. Um, that uh, helped a lot. And the the one one smart decision I think we really made was on a Tuesday, when it, it just hosed down rain, and uh, the course got opened up, and all the guys who went out and played said it was it was useless to go out there, mm. because you know it was going to be so much faster come Thursday, and some of the guys that were saying that you know, see them on the, the training table afterwards, um, that their hands got accustomed to that slower speed and their feel and they had to readjust again. I didn't really readjust because that, that Tuesday afternoon all I did is I was going to work on some speed putting but it was useless. The greens mm. were too slow. So I just did drill work and worked on technique. And I never had to make those type of adjustments come Thursday. And so I think that was a, a pretty smart decision if you know in hindsight. And it's funny you say that because I remember a few weeks ago you made that error where you went out earlier on in the week and the greens were still out. I can't remember where it was, maybe Austin. Mm. And you were saying that that had hindered you during the tournament, that you just couldn't get the speed. Correct. And, you know, that, that happens. You know, sometimes mm. you, you want to get some work in um, and get your touch, but sometimes it's just useless. And you know that come game time, the golf course is going to change. And Augusta is notoriously known for adjusting things from Wednesday to Thursday. Mm. Uh, but they they were playing from behind because of so much rain. And so we knew we were going to get faster, but they weren't going to get where they were um, out of control, where you felt afraid on a downhill putt. You know, that was one of the one of the common comments that I've, I think that we all had as players is that who've played there for a number of years that we left us so many putts short, and especially the downhill putts. We didn't, you know, putting from memory, you just mm. don't realize that um, how, how much we putt from memory, that the putts just weren't rolling out like they normally were. And, um, you know, I, I, first couple of days I left a few short, uh, left them on the low side. I'm like, I mean, got to be more aggressive. And again, that was one of the common, you know, themes throughout the week from, from a lot of the players. Essentially, you're saying that the start of the week, you felt that you had every facet of your game under control. When was the last time you can say that you felt that? <laughs> uh, I probably would have to say somewhere in 2013. So. so special for you to be able to have that. Now, from that, going into the week and essentially into the Sunday, whenever I watch sports, I always try and get into the athlete's mind and wonder when I'm watching, what are they thinking? I want to touch on some pivotal moments during that back nine on Sunday and have you say what was going through your mind. Mm. So first up on 12, when both Francesco and Tony hit it in the water, what went through your mind then? Well, well actually, it, Francesco hit first, and we had noticed, Joe and I had noticed that, um, that Brooksy and Poltz both were in the water. And I know from playing with Brooksy a lot is that he's got a much stronger ball flight than I do, especially with the short irons. I mean, he just, it pierces through the wind. And for him to come up short with, with I'm sure he had, he had a nine iron, and I know he likes to, to hit that little hot bleeder of, of his. 
I kind of, kind of earmarked that when I was on over in eleven. It's like, okay, there might be something there. Because mm -hmm. uh, when I played that eleventh, eleventh hole is over in the trees, and I hooked that seven iron out of there, I gave it a little bit more because of the wind coming off, uh, off the left. Uh, I could see some of the, the water ripples there on eleven, uh, before I was building my stance. Uh, I did one la one last look over and I could see the, the, rip, the water ripples move a little, little bit more and so I had to give a little bit more of a, of a turn which I did. Um, probably also explains why I hit it just a little bit past the flag as well but I wanted to make sure I turned it. And so with that, you know, I know it bounces around there in the corner but um, my, my whole game plan was to put it over the, the tongue of the bunker on 12. And seeing Francesco, I, I know he didn't hit it solid but he was trying to chip an 8 and Chipping a flight eight, you know, it, it came up a little bit short, and I was committed to hitting it on my spot. I just happened to, to draw it up against that wind a little bit more, and I wanted to. So I thought it was going to probably be a six or eight feet past to where it was, and it you know, basically just got on the, on the green. And so I said, ah, that's why you know, Brooksy and, and, and Pulse both ended up short. Mm -hmm. There's a little more wind into than there's more across. Uh, and then Tony had a good shot. Um, you can see it just get killed at the end. It stalled out. It was actually, it was a really good shot. Hit, hit flush, got to his peak, and you get to see it stall out that fraction. I said, well, that's, that's all it takes, and end up short in the water. At this point, in the way that you're talking about it, you're so into the shots and what's happening. Is there any part of you that's aware of the overall tournament and momentum and how that hole in particular is affecting everything at that stage? Well, seeing the two guys ahead of me hitting the water, two guys playing with me hitting the water, um, right, now, right now, at that moment, it was Francesco's tournament. He's, he's the one who had the two-shot lead. Um, you fast forward to 13, and all of a sudden, it seems like there's four guys that were tied for the lead at the time. You know, Brooksy just makes eagle, I make birdie, Francesco makes birdie, and then Cantley just made, made something up ahead of us. DJ's making a run. Baba just got, got the 10 quickly, and so it, went from a one horse race with all of us kind of chasing Francesco mm -hmm. to now Pandora's box is now opened up playing 13 where right now there's at least seven, probably seven guys legitimate chance to win the tournament with six holes to go. Uh, so it got very interesting trying to figure it all out. So mm -hmm. when I got down 13, um, I got a chance to look at the board and see you know, where everyone stood. I'm like, okay, the next board I don't, next board I see was not until 15. There's no board on 14. So get a good understanding, see where they all are, look at what holes they're on in case I hear any roars, who that might be. And for, you know, obviously there's significance to certain roars, but I want to know what, pos what players in what position for, so that I know that after I play 14, headed to 15, I have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. And then on 15, as you say, that's when you see the next leaderboard, and that's where you take the lead. Correct, and I end up taking the lead at, uh, at 15. Uh, they posted the number there. I hit it close on 16. So I, as I'm leaving uh, 16 tee box, I take one last look at 15 because that's the last time we see the board until 17 green. There's no, there's no board on 16. And so trying to get an understanding of who is ahead of me, what their scenarios are, where they might make birdies, if they make birdie, if I make birdie here and get to 14, um, how many guys have a chance to get to 14 under par? Mm -hmm. And if I make par the last two holes. Um, so I'm just trying to figure all that out. And meanwhile, thinking, okay, let's just focus on my game, but yeah. also I got to know the, the scenario. It's like, you know, it's like in any other sport, you want to know time and distance. Mm -hmm. You want to know what's going on so you can play the appropriate shots and, or understand the scenarios and what your options are. And then 16, when you extended it to two, what was going through your mind then? Uh, after I just made birdie there, uh, as I'm walking to 17T, I said, I've been here before. Uh, in 2005, I chipped in, I grabbed a two-shot lead, and I screwed up. I mean, I went bogey-bogey was fortunate enough to beat DeMarco in a playoff. Well, not, not this time. Let's go ahead and get committed on this tee shot. Let's, let's pipe this tee shot down here. And I hit one of the probably the hottest cuts that I hit all week. I mean, I hammered this thing. And uh, it was right up the middle of the fairway, simple nine iron up on the green. 
and uh, took one last look, look at the board. And so th at that time, it's basically only, you know, Brooksy really has a legit chance to uh, make things a little more interesting. So I try to make my putt there at 17. The wind's coming off the left, and I should never have done it, but the wind's coming off my left, and it starts howling a little bit. And so then I adjusted my line just a little bit of another, another ball because of the wind was going to blow it. I thought the wind was going to blow it, you know, down the hill. It never blew it. Mm. And then it passed the hole. And I said, okay, I should have just backed off the putt, but I didn't. Yeah. And then going up 18, I said, well, there's a couple different scenarios that could happen here. Well, Brooksy could make birdie. Uh, that puts me with a one-shot lead. Um, or I can make a mistake. Well, if I make par, uh, he's got a hole out. So let's just focus on that. Let's just focus on putting this ball in the fairway. What can I get in the fairway here? Well, driver, I hit in the left bunker there one day. And it's like 298, but, you know, I'm, I'm amped up. I was going to say. Uh, the wind's slightly down off the right. And so if I hit driver, which I wanted to do, uh, it brings the bunker into play. Where I, now I have to cut it. Now, three wood, I don't have to cut it. I can hit a straight ball, I can hit a draw ball, I can hit a cut, I can hit whatever I want. Um, it's not going to get to the bunker. Fine, it hit it down there. And then I didn't hear any roars, you know, up ahead of me. And then when I looked up, when I got past the corner, I was able to see up on the 18th green, um, Brooksy hit a tap in putt, so that must have, that must have been for par. Um, I didn't see him, you know, miss the short one for birdie because I was, you know, walking up the fairway. And so I knew that bogey wins the tournament. When you had two putts for it, this is a moment that you've been waiting for for so long. What was going through your mind then, or were you just really focused on? My focus was still the change, uh, was still the same. It was just make sure I hit it with cup speed, um, so it can fall in anywhere in the cup. Uh, I wasn't lagging it. I wasn't dying it. I wasn't trying to make it. I was just focused on cup speed. Cup speed will, if it, that's what you always try to hit every putt. So if it goes in, it goes in. Uh, just make sure you have the speed right and. That green is different, you know, they, they redid the green. I, I thought I poured it and it, it hung and, uh, you know, had a little 18 inch tapping. And there it was. And there it was. <laughs> what is it about Augusta National that makes it so special for you and your family? Uh, I, I think one, it's just that being the only major championship that never moves. Um, the history behind it, the, the lure of it, just the immaculate conditions. It's, the right, it's the passage of spring. You know, we all look forward to, you know, springtime and that's when we can play more golf and and what better showcases that than this iconic place like Augusta National. And for me, that's what I remember growing up as a kid is watching that and, and seeing all the, these flowers blooming in these perfect conditions. There's no rough there at the time. There's no second cut. So everything was all the same length grass um, you can see the guys spraying the ball all over the place, but they kept saying it's a second shot golf course, and you would see numerous players be so defensive on putts. Um, and then you see guys make runs on the back nines, and never really understood that until I got there. And then I realized, yeah, that's what can happen. You know, the, the, the ability to, to have two par fives on the back nine that are reachable with iron, it just opens up Pandora's box to the possibilities and you bring in water on what 11, 12, 13, 15, 16. Um, there's so many different things that can happen and it has happened and that's uh, for me to be a part of that to have now won it five times and knowing the fact that I'm going to be when I first won it knowing the fact I'll, I'll be coming here for the rest of my life mm -hmm. um, was special uh, but this one feels special in its own way. It's so different you know the in 2001, I won the Masters to win all four in a row. I defended the very next year. I chipped in at 16 and, and 05. And then this year, it would go 14 years between uh, jackets is a long time. Um, I've certainly have had my opportunities, but I never did it. And to now finally do it with so many guys with a chance. And then on top of that, to actually have won my first major championship coming from behind. Yeah. It's just so ironic, <laughs> given my situation of my last few years of what I've kind of had to battle through. Uh, 
that now is the, finally, the time that I finally <laughs> come from behind when I've had more game throughout the years and I've had more runs where I've been, been in situations where I've been in better spots, less guys I had to you know, leapfrog uh, or I had to battle out and didn't seem to get it done, but for some reason I got it done this, this past week. As you touched on everything that you'd been through, this victory goes beyond golf and sport and is a symbol of overcoming adversity mm. worldwide now. How does that make you feel in yourself? Proud. You know, the, it, it, no one's perfect. I and mean, everyone has dealt um, cards in their life and obstacles that we all, we all have to overcome. And some are different than others. And um, I've certainly have had my, my obstacles that I've had to try and overcome and to fight, um, to get back up and, and know that, you know, this is all not done alone. You know, I've had a fantastic group of people around me um, and their love and support have, have helped. And then having the kids and their, their love, because, um, you know, I've tried to explain this over the years is that they never knew golf to be a, a good thing in my life. It only, the only thing they can remember is that it brought this incredible amount of pain to their dad. And they don't want everyone to see their dad in pain. And so um, to now have them see this side of it, um, the side that I've experienced for so many years of my life, and, uh, but I had to battle to get back to this point, and it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> you really got me going there. <laughs> um, totally forgot what I was going to say then. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, I can, I can feel, I know it's tough to pick up on a camera, but I can really feel how mm. much that means to you. And it does. It really does. You know, it's, it has not been easy. Um, I mean, there were, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a, a pretty good period of there where I never thought I'd play golf again. And uh, I was just hoping to, to build a walk without pain. I'd be able to live without being in, you know, the, the feelings that I had going down my leg. You know, I said, this is what the rest of my life is going to be like. I mean, this is going to suck. Um, but now I, I don't have any of that nerve pain. I'm stiff as hell, yes. <laughs> I, I, I waddle like a duck at times, but... Um, it's not, it's not painful, it's just achy, and I, I can deal with achiness. Just a couple of final things moving forwards now. How excited are you to play with the freedom of this major victory? You know, Henny, it, I don't think it's any different, you know? I don't think it's, um, it opens up me to freewheel it or play any differently. I have always prepared for events certain ways, and for each event has their own unique preparation. For their own, then you add in major championships on different venues and what those preps look like. And I don't foresee this being any different than that. Um, that's what allowed me to win 14 previous major championships and also all the other events I've been able to win, um, is that I never looked at it as, as freewheeling. I always looked at it as those are positive experiences that I can learn from. Now, now, how can I prep better? Yeah. Or where can I learn from the prep that went wrong? Uh, why didn't I have that particular week? Um, I can learn a lot from this past week. You know, I had a lot of things go right and uh, really felt that, uh, that the prep time, this is the, the neat thing about, about Augusta, one of the good and bads, okay? When I won in 2000, won 2000 the, the PGA, you know, I had nine months to think about the Masters, okay? <laughs> so, you know, that's, when they asked me, how long did it take you to prep for this year's Masters? And I said about six months. And I've been looking forward to this event for about six months. And what things am I gonna need? And for it to all come together um, for the fifth time, it's unique and special. Now, the quick turnaround to the PGA is just a month away. And so that's what I'm, I'm looking for. I'm looking back in my past and look, how did I, how did I do it from in 2000, the US Open, uh, the British Open, the PGA? Mm. 
you know, those were quick turnarounds, one, one each month. You know, what did I do? And having, a, having that positive Rolodex to, to revert back to is going to help. Um, and also, I, I want to enjoy this, you know, and, uh, but also then in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know what, I haven't done the major in about a month. And, you know, the prep starts. Um, but I'm like, okay, I can mentally prep for this. Okay, good. I really don't want to do much right now. <laughs> you know, I, it's, you know, I haven't got to the point where I'm willing to put in the hours yet mm -hmm. um, and do the, the, the dirty stuff to, to get the body ready to, you know, put in all the hours of hitting golf balls and putting. And um, I'm doing all the visual stuff, um, but I just haven't put in the physical work yet. Um, but it's, it's probably coming this weekend. And understandably so, I'd mm. say. Now, final thing I've got to ask, you mentioned other majors. Jack's 18 record, mm -hmm. what are you saying? What's in your mind now? Well, I always thought it was possible if I had everything go my way. You know, it took him an entire career to get to 18. Um, so, you know, now that I've had a, a, another extension to my career, uh, one I didn't think I had a couple years ago, um, you know, if I, if I do things correctly and everything falls my way, yeah, it's a possibility. You know, it's, I'm never going to say it's not, mm. um, except for a couple of years ago when I <laughs> couldn't, couldn't walk. <laughs> um, uh, now it's, I just need to have a lot of things go my way. And you know, who's to say that it, it will or will not happen? I mean, that's what the future holds. I we don't know. And the only thing I can promise you this is that I, I will be prepared. Um, now, whether or not it all comes together, because you need to have mind, body, and soul to come together for those four days, uh, that doesn't always happen. You know, it, if you think about it, I've been out here, what, since 96, 23 years or so? Uh, it's only come together 15 times. It takes special moments for it all to come together, and, you know, hopefully I can have it come together, you know, down the road more often. But I'm, I'm excited that, that I have this opportunity again. I have this opportunity to play um, in major championships. It's um, last year proved a lot to myself by having the lead at, at the at the Open, mm -hmm. having a chance to to push Brooksy and, and almost steal a PGA. Um, those two major championships allowed me to have this one, and hopefully this one will ha let me allow me to have a few more. I love how you say only 15 times it's come <laughs> together. <laughs> well, Tiger, from all of us at Golf TV, congratulations Thanks, on your fifth green jacket. You got it, thank you. Only the 15th major. Okay. And we can't wait to see what the rest of 2019 brings. Thank you. Thank you.